So Apple just released all of the new features coming to iOS 18, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, and Vision OS all yesterday at WWDC, Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. And there is so many incredible, new, crazy, weird uh, features coming, and I wanna talk about some of the greatest ones right now. So I think one of the most noticeable changes, you know, right off the bat really, is, is just the home screen. Now you'll notice, obviously it looks a little bit different. This does not look very iPhone. And so what I've done here is, number one, you can move icons wherever you want and however you want. So say for example, I wanted to move the Photos app up here. Now there is still definitely a grid system, which means there's four apps across, a ton of apps down. So I can't have it right in the middle like this, and it will still snap to somewhere, but I can place it, uh, you know, four across in any uh, direction, or uh, I can just kind of throw them sort of all over the place and, and make it look chaotic. Now, another really awesome feature you'll see right up here when I'm in jiggle mode for the app. So there's an edit button and you'll see it says add widget or customize. So if we say customize, it pulls up a new menu all the way down here at the bottom. And so you can switch the app icons uh, to automatically change from a dark mode to a light mode, depending on what your device is set at. Now, if I click dark mode, you'll see it instantly changes all of these apps, all of the Apple apps, I should clarify, to a dark mode variant. And I do think uh, this can look really, really awesome. And of course, it doesn't do anything to certain other apps that aren't updated yet. So ideally, hopefully, we'll be getting a cool dark mode in future apps like Instagram, for example. Uh, but for now, it is just the default Apple apps. But, you know, again, it does look very cool. So over here, we obviously have the light option, and this just brings back light mode. Now, this is a crazy one. This is uh, a tinted option. So basically, this does overlay every single app you have on your iPhone. And you can change from, you know, a spectrum of colors and then, of course, the saturation of each color. Now, you have the power to make this look like absolute garbage, um, as you can see here. Now, of course, these are very slow to load. This is beta 1. Um, you can see some just aren't loading at all right here. But it is a very, like, you have the power to make it look terrible. And of course, when you go back into jiggle mode, you can click edit again, and this is where you're just gonna add your typical widgets. Or you see, we have sort of a Vision Pro-esque window size slider, which will, when it stops glitching, allow you to change your different sizes and stuff. Some widgets, of course, don't support big ones like this one. Now, as far as customization is concerned, there is even more. So if we go to our lock screen, you'll see we have two options right here. We have our buttons and you know this is something that people have wanted uh, to be possibly changed since like the iPhone 10 uh, and now you can do it which is insane so you're gonna have to hold on to the lock screen click customize click lock screen and this is where you're gonna access your different buttons here so we can remove both of them and click the plus button and this is where this is just basically a whole like category upon category upon category of just controls you know, more than you, you know, realistically could even use. And so let's say we just use the calculator, for example. And then the next one, dark mode. So we'll click done up here, click home. Now we have the two options and we can use them. So like obviously dark mode is going to change it from uh, dark mode to light mode on the system. And then the calculator, when you hold that, is going to open up the calculator. Now there's actually... Uh, a lot of updates to the calculator, which I will talk about in just a minute, so we'll hop out of that for now. But again, this is just giving you, you know, creative freedom, really, to just do whatever you want. You can obviously search for different ones here uh, and, and really personalize your iPhone, right? And again, a lot of this, like, you can make it look terrible or you can make it really useful. It's <laughs> entirely up to you. So next up on the customization list is going to be our control center. So if you swipe up, there's there's a lot to unpack here. There, there really is. So there's multiple menus, and you'll see right here is sort of your favorites tab. You can see by the little heart right here. And this is just where you're going to have, you know, some of your, your main use case ones. Underneath it is the circle tab, and this is where you're going to have most of your controls. Uh, under here is going to be your audio control tab, and then down here is going to be all of your connections internet related stuff like that. Now, obviously this is pretty cool, right? I do think it looks a little messy and I would appreciate having it cleaned up a little bit, but there is actually even crazier stuff we can do with this. So let's say we go to our little heart section. We're gonna hold down 
and it's going to go into a similar almost jiggle mode and you'll see each of these controls actually have these little lines on it so I can make it bigger or smaller depending on how I would like it to and ideally it flows freely sometimes it's a little glitchy of course but what's even cooler is you can see this add a control button now when you click on that it brings up a whole nother like carousel of just control after control uh, and you can have duplicates of the same control I don't know why you need that but of course it is an option <laughs> Uh, and you can really just go all out with this. So let's say I want the volume slider. And so I can move it however I want. You know, I can I can readjust all these however I want. And I can say, for example, I want the volume slider down here and I want the brightness slider down here, right? I can click out of this here and then now I have both the brightness uh, and the volume sliders right there. And so this is just your shortcut. This is, you know, I would put like my most used uh, control center features right here in this menu but underneath that is going to be your main again other menu so you can still hold down on it the same way click this button down here and you have your same millions and millions of controls so let's say we just do sound recognition for now and then of course you can resize it just as you would like and leave it like that and then underneath that is again your audio one so you can still hold down just like this you can resize it let's say we want this audio to be smaller and then we can add even more controls here to make it even more personalized then let's say we have our internet one of course we can resize it add more controls uh, but let's say I want to leave this one that size we can scroll down again and it's going to give us a free menu where we can add more controls so let's say we do the stopwatch for this one right we can have that however I want and then it gives us another menu in short the control center is crazy. Uh, obviously, some things could do with an update, but you can really just stack menu after menu after menu and, and make this as personalized as you could possibly want it to be. And of course, you know, there should be more controls coming, you know, but also in third party apps as well, making it even more useful. But there's so many phenomenal things here. It's absolutely <laughs> crazy. And one more thing um, to mention about the apps, if you go into your uh, customize menu, uh, you can actually change the different app icon sizes right from here as well. So small means the apps will be smaller and you get all of your different names. And then large means the apps are larger and you get to remove the names. And that also brings me to a new app you may have noticed, and this is literally just called Passwords. Now, what Apple did was they took, you know, the keychain section inside of settings and actually developed a whole separate app for it. So if we click on it, it'll ask for Face ID. Once it authenticates me, you'll see we have a whole bunch of different sections. So we have all code, security, pass keys, Wi-Fi, and deleted. And of course, you can do different things with uh, shared passwords and pass keys uh, and just and do all kinds of stuff, really. So, you know, it makes it easy to search and do all kinds of stuff. I do think the app is really nice as it is. And of course, it'll just continue to sort of get better as time progresses. But overall, it's very nice, you know, to have a separate app just for this. Uh, and I do think I'll be using it quite a lot. As far as ch design changes are, uh, the settings app actually did get a bit of a redesign. So nothing crazy like the rumors had suggested. However, you'll see it looks mostly normal at the top and then it actually ends fairly quickly at the bottom. So they've done things like move your battery to the top and if you actually click on your battery and then go into charging, uh, on the on the devices which allow you to set a charging limit, you can actually go from 80 to 100 now in increments of five, which is cool. But I, I why would you set it at 95 when, when you could set it at 100? So I guess the increments just don't make the most sense. I would actually rather have maybe the percentage be lower than 80. Like I could set it anywhere from like 50 to 100 maybe. I don't know, just just an idea. But you can change that. And just other things, like if you click on general, all of these have their own uh, icons now. And it's just all sorted, I would say, fairly nicely. Uh, and if we go down to the bottom, your extra apps, including Apple apps, are all going to be under the apps category. And they're all categorized from A to Z. And you can search for them. If I said uh, photos, you know, it'll eventually come up, of course. So overall, very easy uh, to use. All right, next up, another very highly requested feature is going to be locking uh, and hiding apps. So say, for example, I want to lock Instagram. So what you'll do is you're going to hold on it and you'll see you'll see a button that says click or it says require face ID. So you'll click on that and you'll say you can either require face ID when you uh, open it or you can hide and require face ID. So if I click require face ID, it'll scan my face 
And now anytime I try to open Instagram, it will make me scan my face. So I'll let it do that and you'll see it opens just like that. Now, if I wanted to hide it, we'll hold on it again. We'll click uh, don't require face ID. It'll have to scan my face again to do that. And if we hold it again, we'll click require face ID and then click hide and require face ID. So it'll scan my face one more time and you'll see a menu that says hide Instagram pops up. And it says this app will no longer be visible on your iPhone, except in a few places such as settings. Face ID will be required to reveal, open, or use Siri with this app. And you'll see um, the app's icon and name will be obscured on the home screen. There will also be an obscured folder for hidden apps on your app library. And then you will not receive notifications or calls. So we'll click hide app and you'll see it disappears just like that. And now what's crazy, if I go to search for it on here, if I say Instagram, you'll see it doesn't pop up anywhere. What you'll have to do is scroll down to the very bottom of your app library where it says hidden. You'll click on it, it'll require Face ID, and then the app will pop up just like that. And if I click on it, it's gonna require Face ID again, and now I'm inside of Instagram. So very secure, uh, you'll need a face, and if it doesn't recognize your face, you can always use uh, your iPhone passcode. Interesting detail as well, when your app is locked and you get a notification from it, like for example, I've hidden, or I mean, I've locked uh, X, it actually will not reveal the notification. Even if your phone is opened up, if you go back to it, it will not actually uh, show what the notification is. All right, next up is messages. Now there's a lot of cool stuff coming to messages and you'll see one of the most visually obvious things is this button right here. And if you click on that, it brings up a whole bunch of effects, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's say we do, hello, how was your day? Now, what we can do, of course, is hold down on this button and get your old, you know, text effects that we're all familiar with. Or if I say we highlight a word, then we'll click this button right here. And then let's say we want big, right? So it makes the hello specifically bigger. Uh, and then let's say we do highlight day and then add a jitter effect to it. And then we do how was your, just like that. And then let's say we underline that. So you'll see, I can send it just like that. And for anyone not on iOS 18, it'll just show up as a regular text message. But if you or your friend has iOS 18, uh, you will see it how, it how it was sent. So very cool, you know, nice to have a couple extra effects and it's just fun to play around with. So this is another very highly requested feature. And so what you can do is you click this plus button, scroll over to where it says send later. Now, if you click on that, you can say, you know, you write out your message and you can click this and this is where you'll schedule when you want your iMessages to be sent. Now, I believe you can only do it like two weeks in advance. And so it'll actually end on June 25th. It's weird. It does give you options to go further, uh, but it wants to keep it at this time and it won't actually let you go any time above that either. So the latest we can go is about two weeks in advance and we can just schedule it to say hello. So what I'll do is let's say today... So it's currently 921, let's do, yeah, 922. So we'll click send and you'll notice it's actually a very cool little animation looking thing. And it just says hello with the little lines around it. And so you know that that is a message that is going to be scheduled to sort of send later. And so you'll see here is just the uh, rounded info sheet for iOS 18 by Apple. And so for the most part, you know, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's for the most part simple. Now there is a new designed mail app, which is not actively available. And I will, that will be something I'll have to show you at a later point. Uh, but it is awesome that it is there and will be fun to use as well as you can actually send messages to friends and family using satellite. So now instead of using satellite uh, with just like, you know, emergency messages, you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, the ability to just be able to text, you know, your mom and say where you are without cellular is an awesome feature to have. Now, there is so many features, I physically could not cover it in one video. So I just wanna talk a minute about AI, Apple intelligence. So yeah, no, crazy enough, I, I people made jokes about Apple calling AI Apple intelligence because there's an A in it and A works with Apple. But no, they, they genuinely did call it Apple intelligence. Now there is so much to unpack with Apple intelligence. As a matter of fact, I think that needs to be a whole separate video. Uh, but just to keep it short, uh, I'm thanking uh, Aaron Zolo on Twitter for this one here just because he writes some amazing summaries. But if we go over to Apple Intelligence, which is right over here, there's going to be some fan 
fantastic, phenomenal uh, changes coming to iOS. So just a couple bullet points that he wrote here. So AI will actually rewrite emails and messages, uh, you know, in different suggestive ways to give you different ideas for how you might want to send it. Uh, it'll proofread and then also suggest different edits you can make to it. It'll summarize key points of an email, for example. Uh, new smart replies suggested in mail. Awesome. Email summaries based on email content. Priority notifications on lock screen. And then new reduced interruptions to focus. So there's some awesome things. Of course, Siri got a phenomenal upgrade as well. You know, maybe she'll finally not become useless. Uh, as you'll see here, there is an absolutely beautiful new Siri logo. And of course, this is not present right now. This is beta 1. And you'll see it's the old boring Siri sphere. Um, but essentially there's, so there'll be a cool animation when you hold it. And this is essentially going to be the all new Siri. Uh, and it's going to be phenomenal. You know, all of the Apple AI Siri stuff is coming in a later beta. It will still be in beta preview in fall when the, when iOS 18 comes to the public. But I believe from what I've heard, we should be able to access, you know, uh, Apple intelligence around summer-ish. You know, I don't, we don't have exact words on that, but around summer. But there's just, I mean, there's some crazy stuff. Like, there's a feature called Jinmoji, where you can actually input a prompt, and it will create a custom emoji just for you, which was actually one of the rumors. Uh, so I find it, you know, awesome that that is a thing. You know, it's not for me personally, but I know a lot of people would enjoy that. Uh, and there's just, there's so many amazing features coming, you know, um, Apple is working with ChatGPT, on Apple intelligence, but of course they have made sure to include a ton of privacy uh, to make it, you know, the most secure version of itself. But I think last of course we should, well, cover the calculator. So I've grabbed my iPad here and if we go to the calculator, uh, there's some crazy things. So let's actually start right here. We'll just go under basic. So of course iPad does finally have a calculator app making it fulfilled you know it, it, we, people have been asking for this for a hundred years and so it's phenomenal that it's finally here but of course it is a calculator app you know very very simple now of course just off the bat it will actually show you uh your calculation and what the number is which is phenomenal very very awesome and easy to use now you'll notice we also have a timeline of recent calculations which makes it phenomenal so you can always go back and look at different ones and you'll see right here, there's a calculator button. If we click on that, it actually brings up some crazy options here. So we have basic, we have scientific, which brings up all of your other options and buttons you could use. But if we go back over here, there's a new feature called math notes. So if we click on that, we'll turn it sideways here and close out the menu. So math notes is an insane feature. Um, so let's just, let's do something, right? Now this is a snippet of AI, which actually is available, you know, off the bat without having to wait, uh, forever. But let's say we write out 67, uh, times three. We'll write equals, give AI a second, and it will actually give you the answer in orange, but also inside of your own handwriting, which is crazy. Uh, that's, that's so awesome. Now, if we say, for example, we can also edit this equation. So let's do divided by two. You'll see, give it a second to recognize it and it will give you a new answer. Now, of course we can scribble out different things, cover them up and you'll see when it doesn't recognize something, it'll kind of highlight it under this sort of, uh, box. So let's say we do something like 12 times three uh, plus seven and you'll see it won't actually write out the answer um, until I write out the equal sign and then it will take that cough out the answer and so it's a very very interesting and cool way of of doing stuff all right well that's been it guys I really hope you enjoyed this video you know I I love playing with software especially new Apple software uh, and iOS 18 is definitely one of the coolest, biggest updates I've seen for iPhone in a long time. And I had a great time making this video. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell as it helps me out a ton. And I can't wait to see you around. See ya.